Fear Street Part 2 is directed by Lei Jani, who directed the first part of Fear Street. And this time around, we are looking at the history of Ziggy Bergman, who is the person that was in the phone from time to time in the last part. And we arrive at her house, and this is where we have her give the story of her past life and her experience with the witch and how it came to haunt her. And this was an amazing sequel. I, this is like the Empire Strikes Back of the entire thing so far for me. It does everything that the first one does, but extremely better. It's characters while different are still engaging the horror is still bloody awesome the slasher elements worked very well here in fact i would say even better because you're only focused on one slasher who is terrorizing this entire camp and is possessed by the witch and I'm not going to spoil what it, who it is, but I honestly had a good time with it and this kind of character. Uh, Ziggy in the movie is a very unlikable protagonist in the beginning, but kind of everybody in this entire movie is very unlikable. And, and that's the point I tried to go across. That all these people are just lashing out on each other when they're just flawed individuals that are too insecure to come to terms with their own flaws. And once this event starts to occur, they're forced to have they're forced to reconcile with each other because these could be their last moments. And the way it plays out throughout the film, I thought worked very well. There's also a few extensive cameos and actors that at, in terms of being a horror fan like I am I didn't expect to see here and they were good surprises and they were a lot of fun to watch not just Sadie Sink who is the main character who plays the game the movie and she was great she was in Stranger Things if you don't know but also this character from the Halloween 2018 film who played the best friend of the boyfriend character he makes an appearance and he was all right he just didn't get too much screen time uh the filmmaking the uh, whole look of the film it all just feels in continuity with the first movie it's well directed well lit it feels like something from the 70s which i very much like the camp setting is very reminiscent to me of the Friday the 13th movies and all the characters are very entertaining to watch despite them being unlikable uh, especially the sister character played by Emily Rudd who does a really good job in the film and her character with arc with her best friend and sister and how she grows throughout the rest of the film, I thought was very, very interesting to watch. And her character had a lot of depth to her, had a lot of tragedy, and was likable enough for me to understand her character and get behind her. Because even though she tried to act like, to, she tried to act like uh, the girlfriend character from the last part in which she's trying to hide away from her past. She sort of serves that same purpose here and reconciles with her family member. Unfortunately, it doesn't end that well for, it, for everybody because there's a slasher on the loose. Um, but overall, this was a very good follow-up. The characters are likable. As I said, the slasher elements worked well. Whenever there is a jump scare, it's not a false one. And there's enough of a scare factor with the kills and the tension and how the horror elements are built up. That was able, that was for me, digestible. 
and it was something that I very much missed in horror movies. And the fact that this film was able to have a lot of fun being a slasher film, it reminded me of the 80s and 70s horror films that just had fun. And honestly, it just, just took me back from those times, even though I wasn't born in those times. <laughs> But this was a great follow-up. I very much enjoyed this. I'm going to give Fear Street Part 2 an A-. minus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.